Hi, in this video I want to look at instantaneous velocity and acceleration. If you're following in Young and Friedman's University Physics, this is the second and third section of chapter two. So first a little review from section one of this chapter. Speed, as you know, is distance per time in any direction. How many miles per hour can your car go? Speed, if you remember from chapter one, is a scalar quantity. That means it doesn't necessarily specify direction. On the other hand, if we talk about velocity, uh, in physics we make a distinction between speed and velocity. Speed is simply how fast per distance you're going in any direction. But when we begin to talk about velocity, then we're talking about a specific direction. So speed might be going 55 miles per, uh, per hour, but velocity is going 55 miles per hour north, and it's a vector. So average speed, it's, you know, it's pretty easy. If you take the, the distance you end up and subtract the distance you started and divide it by the time you ended up, by the time you started, that's going to give you your average speed. Now, you may have gone faster and slower. You may have had, may have had to stop at a stoplight. Uh, you may have passed a car and sped up. Uh, but basically, if you take the total distance traveled and divide it by the total time it took, you're going to have the average speed you were over that. So um, let's say there's two cars. One speeds up, slows down, speeds up, slows down, and is very annoying to everybody. Let's say there's another one that just has the cruise control on and doesn't, doesn't hit the brakes at all, just for that entire time is going the same speed. They may end up at the destination at exactly the same time. Now, car number one's speed varied. Car number two's speed didn't, different, didn't. But if they started at the same time and stopped at the same time and covered the same distance, then their average speed is exactly the same. Now, instantaneous velocity. This is where calculus comes in. Calculus is a tool that was invented in the 1600s. Imagine, for uh, all of human history, there was no calculus until the 1600s. The Greeks didn't have calculus. Calculus was invented, depending on who you go with, either Newton or Leibniz uh, in the, in the uh, 1600s, and it, it was determined to be a way that you could find, if you, if you had a formula, if you had a mathematical formula for the way the, the speed and acceleration went over a period of time, calculus gives you a tool to hone in on exactly what speed a person's going at a particular point in time. Now, let me give it to you a little bit uh, in word form. We're not going to get into calculus, although, frankly, I think it would be ideal to learn calculus in the context of learning physics. Uh, but anyway, so take the idea of an average velocity. Average velocity is the change in, in distance divided by the change in time. This is what we were just talking about. Now, a lot of times in physics, we'll talk about, you might say, del delta. That's a Greek letter, delta. And it, and it signifies in physics a change. So S is sometimes used for distance. Maybe it would have been helpful if we'd have done delta D, change in distance, over delta T, uh, the change in time. But basically, delta S over delta T means change in distance divided by change in time. That's like X2 minus X1 over T2 minus T1. It's the same thing, average velocity. But what happened? What happened if, what would, what would happen if, we could narrow uh, the change in speed by change in time to a smaller and smaller stretch. So take that guy who's speeding up and slowing down and speeding up and slowing down. Let's say that there was a, uh, he's kind of, you know, up and down and up and down. If we could, the closer we could narrow the time frame, uh, the change in distance in the change in time, if we could narrow that swath, we could come close, if we, especially if we made it smaller, the change in distance and the change in time smaller and smaller and smaller, we could approach something like the instantaneous velocity. And so calculus uses language like this. The limit as the change in time approaches zero of the change in distance per change in time equals dx dt, which is the instantaneous change in distance per time. Calculus gives you the tools to be able to do that, the, to find the instantaneous uh, velocity of that car, even though he's speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down. If you had a formula of some kind 
that express the overall pattern of that car speeding up and slowing down, then by using calculus, you could find out what the instantaneous change in, in velocity was of that car at any point um, while, while he was on that journey. Well, so calculus gives us the tools to find the instantaneous uh, change in distance per time, ds dt. Well, we're not going to get into too much calculus here. Um, but the instantaneous acceleration follows the same principles. So the average acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time, dv dt, uh, where delta v delta t over delta t means the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So once again, if we want to find the instantaneous acceleration, then we, make, we, we, we take the change in time and make it smaller and smaller and smaller. So the, the limit as the change in time, as delta t approaches zero, to where you're almost talking about no change in time. Um, the way that the inventors of calculus called this was when we approach infinitesimals, uh, when we take it down to the infinitesimal change, the, the, the change you can't even notice. The limit as, the, as delta t approaches zero of the change in velocity divided by the change in time is dv dt, the instantaneous change in velocity. Now, we call that the derivative of the velocity. Um, notice that we can then do a second derivative and get the uh, equation we had before, dx dt. How do you find the dx dt? Well, you take the second derivative of the acceleration. And the way that you write a second derivative, which is a derivative of a derivative, is this way. Um, again, that's a little calculus. If you haven't had calculus yet, um, no, no sweat. You can do physics without calculus, although you can do physics a lot more precisely if you know calculus.